Hello, Craig. Rare that we start the recording before we start the Craig, but... Well, it's a, a special treat for you, buddy. I don't know how, but it is. Less of us, it's automatically a treat. <laughs> I, um... Uh, so, on my little adventure today, I, I saw two people that I'm pretty sure were unintentionally cosplaying. Okay? Okay. I saw uh, Elderly Shaggy. I mean, I look up and there's a guy the same, uh, the exact shade of green shirt and brown pants. And he had like a little scruff of a chin and heavily balding. (laughs) Poor guy. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he didn't intend to be a Shaggy, but all right. But yeah. the more interesting one on my uh, little adventure today was anti-Peter Griffin. <laughs> okay. Okay, take uh, Peter Griffin's uh, uh, shirt and pants and switch the colors. Okay. All right. And once again, balding. I don't know why it's balding today, but hear me out. And boom, Peter Griffin. And, so a, and the entire time on the bus, he was muttering to himself, I'm not sure if he was praying if he has, uh, you know, yeah, uh, a little, or what? But he talked non fucking stop for like forty five minutes that I was on the bus with him, and to the point where I couldn't quite make out what he was saying, but occasionally I would get like Jesus, right? <laughs> yeah. Although you know, don't know if he's maybe he was just mad, like he was muttering under his breath about something that somebody did. He's like, motherfucking Jesus, I'm gonna have to. Yeah, that motherfucker needs Jesus. I'm gonna send him to Jesus. <laughs> that was yeah. really happy. Well, maybe maybe he had a little mental health condition going on there. Maybe he forgot to take his meds today. Mental health issues in a red state? You don't say. Uh, don't don't you need a gun to have that? Isn't that what what the big talking point on the right now is? Is you know only people that are shooting up places are the ones that uh, have mental health issues. You're right. I forgot that. How 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 could I? For shame on me. Uh, yeah, we've got several. Uh, granted, there's some of our more severe clients that have to live in the assisted, the you know, the mental health group homes, but they do talk to themselves pretty constantly as part of their illness. But um, had a had a brief chat with one of them today while he was in the office for some other stuff. Like I don't, I don't see this guy for therapy. He doesn't want therapy, and honestly, therapy couldn't help him. He's pretty, pretty severely schizophrenic. But he sometimes will go and talk to like paintings that we have hanging up in our lobby of like flowers and stuff. He'll go and he'll talk to them. And he was, he walked up to me, and he's got some kind of cyst or something on his arm, and he like was pointing at it. He was like, it, it, he talks kind of like Boomhauer from uh, <laughs> King of the Hill. So he's really hard to understand, but he's like pointing to this cyst on his arm. He's like, "Hey man, you got this cyst here? I'm gonna have to go over to the doctor. They're gonna have to poke a hole in it and suck the stuff right out." <laughs> That's probably a little too understandable to represent his speech, but yeah, you know, it's like I'm like, "Oh, okay, okay, buddy." I mean, I, you know, I'm using his name. I'm not gonna say it here, but like, I'm using. I'm like, "Okay, I got a, I got another another patient who's waiting on me out front." It's like, hey, you get me in the doctor and look at my tattoos. Just, just, get this, just take care of it. Then no, I'll have to yeah, get it up. Yeah, I just put the right hole in there. And go. Yep. I genuinely would like to see that, actually. I would. Like, I watch those types of things on YouTube every once in a while, like those extraction videos. I would like to see that, but also, like, I'm not going to encourage him to do something on his own, and I'm not going to do it. I'll just get him some alcohol. He also is always asking us if we'll hire him to to work at our air quotes hospital. Like he like it's definitely not a hospital. This is like a house. You know, our clinic is in like an old house that has, you know, existed for 60 or 70 years. It's been a whole bunch of different things throughout its history. But like he calls it the hospital, which, you know, he could call it worse things. I'm not necessarily complaining about that, but it's just it's just kind of funny. He's he's like He's probably the definition of, like, crazy but harmless. At least where he's at. I don't know what he'd be like if he was off his meds. 
Because even with his meds, he's pretty crazy. But anyways, I don't I don't really have any have any stories to tell. Not on the podcast anyways. You know about one of my stories, but mm-hmm. I'm not gonna tell that one. It's one of my one of my secrets. To, right, save to, it for the book. To, yeah, I, I've talked about that before too. Like I write stuff down and you know, some days it'll I don't know if it's just gonna be for me to have kind of up until the end or if I'm ever actually gonna sit down and turn it into the book, but I have so many stories and adventures of my own and of clients that I've worked with. I've got a really big like Google Drive uh folder full of stuff on on people. You know, identifying details changed to comply with HIPAA laws and protect their privacy and stuff, but mm-hmm. I got a lot. Yay, we did it. Woo. All right, now time to record it for real. Right. Sounds good. Now that we got the test run out of the way. Um I'm just kind of looking at what's popular on Steam right now. And obviously, Baldur's Gate, right? Yeah. Uh, Starfield's up there, which I do have it preloaded through uh, Game Pass. I also have it preloaded through Game Pass. I, I had to move some stuff around because I'm going to give it the best shot it can at being playable. So I actually have it on the SSD. Yep. I uh, installed it on my SSD as well. Uh, she's a chunky boy. I didn't even look to see how big it was. Like, I went to install it, and I had enough space. Gigs. Okay, yeah, I, I had enough space. Well, it was more I was making sure I had enough space for... Uh, okay, time for a rant. What is it with Windows putting uh, random shit on the C drive whenever you want uh, to keep it pretty clean? I don't know. It bothers the shit out of me, too. Google... Google Drive uh, does that as well. It's It creates like a separate, like no matter where you tell it to go, it creates a separate local drive or local file system on your C drive and just like doubles up its space. Oh, I don't know if you knew that or not. On the boot drive, uh, well, I don't use Google Drive for that. So uh, thankfully Dropbox doesn't do that. So there is that. No, Dropbox goes wherever you tell it. And Google Drive goes wherever you tell it, and also on your C drive. It creates, like, a virtual drive, but it's on your C drive. <clears throat> and also, well, let's get, just get into my documents. Uh, or let's not, because my documents isn't for my documents. It's for everything else, it seems. And that's also on the C drive. Uh, I think part of it is just a certain part of the uh, tool set being lazy. Of not wanting to use like the dedicated folders that they've that Windows set aside for game saves. It's like, well, obviously, uh, let's just put it in my documents because that's always going to be there. We don't have to search for it, right? Yeah. And it's just kind of gotten to be a mess over the years. I mean, I go into my documents uh, and let's see, there's Audacity because, right? Uh, BeamNG, Blood Bowl, uh, Dolphin Emulator. I've got Studios, which has called the Wild, and, right? and, and all this shit doesn't have to be here. And this is just in the main documents folder. We're not even getting into my games that actually has you know, stuff that, well, some of it could be cleaned out, but you know, it actually is self-contained into a games folder. But no, right? Yeah. So that's Windows, my ramp for now. Windows does some really dumb shit with that. I've tried a couple of times to go to Linux as well. Oh, L- Linux is very scary to work with. I've only done you know, a little bit of stuff with it. And there's a lot of... Okay. I, I look at it this way. Mac you know, is pretty locked down, prevents you from doing dumb shit. Windows will ask you if you want to do dumb shit. And then it's like, well, okay. Linux doesn't ask. It's like, Oh, you want to uh, delete the file system? Okay. I'm not paying enough to uh, care about this. Yeah. Good luck, fucker. But yeah, I- I've tried a couple of Linux distros over the years, and I've just never been able to glom onto it. I mean, part of the problem with Linux is just support for what we do. Yeah. Although, it is better these days uh, with the Steam Deck, because, you yeah, know, that's Linux-based. Unless you, you know, boot Windows onto it, which... It's a little haphazard because, uh, but that's kind of beside the point. 
uh, uh, Steam has done a lot for Linux-based uh, gaming. And it's far better than what it used to be. It's not in a great spot, but it's, yeah, it's a lot better than what it used to be, at least. Yeah, I agree with that. Although, watching, you know, CRD's videos, I'm learning that there's <laughs> Linux has been in a lot more places than I've realized over the years. Yeah. Uh, but does it gaslight the CPU? <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Oh. I love Katha Raid, dude. I do, too. I'm so glad I found him. I'm pretty sure Katha Raid dude is one that I've shared with you. Or like, vice versa. I know there's been shares. Yeah. I, I, I still think he's like the, the bastard son of uh, Heck Moan and Technology Connections. Yeah, I can agree with that. All right, I saved my stuff. 12.06. Bye-bye. Not... <laughs> yeah, bye-bye. Stop the Craig recording. 12.06, not too bad. Hello. Hello, Craig. Welcome to our abomination again. I should probably fire up Audacity. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so we get games played. U.S. Senator Prasses. Prasses? Prasses. Valve on Nazi content, Sony's DualSense Edge controller, worst battery life, and Discovery Q. I didn't see any Community Corner stuff. I uh, didn't either. I will double check the email. Starting to try to figure out why I haven't shut down twi- my Twitter yet. Because, right? What, what uh, just new, a, uh, new thing happened? Well, no, it's just I have uh, people I've been following uh, starting to shut down as well. So, all right. Oh. Yeah, I'll stick around until the lights go out, just to watch, you know, what happens. Oh, but supposedly, uh, on all new new polls that reflect uh, Twitter policy, free speech is now fee speech. Yep, uh, I saw that. Because, right? I saw his little hissy fit. Uh, I mean, I figured it, you know, he wasn't going to step down if he lost that. But no. Right. But, you, yeah. but, but seeing him throw yet another hissy fit, right? I mean, Elon Musk and Donald Trump are, are cut from the same cloth. You know. No, I'm rich. pretty sure Elon Musk is an orange. <laughs> Touche. Well, Elon Musk is still young. Give him time. Mm, true. He hasn't, uh, he hasn't ripened yet. But I'm no, not, rich... I'm sorry for his kids. I mean, they do have enough money to make up for the, uh, to get enough therapy to make up for the names, but damn. Yeah, but who's to say they actually will get get the therapy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Elon Musk and Donald Trump. I mean, they're both just shitty rich kids mm-hmm. who have lost way too much money, but mm-hmm. have been able to lie and scheme their way for long enough to stick around. If although, although Elon supposedly, Musk, uh, Trump's uh, tax records are going to be released, so that's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I know it's not going to make a lick of difference to the supporters, but it's going to be funny. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the... uh, What's the right way to say it? Mainstream Republican Party? I don't... Because, I mean, there's a pretty noticeable divide in the last year to two years that has formed within that political party between those who are still sticking with Trump and, and the people that you know, we're always his cronies and the rest of the shit heels. You mean the ones that'll spend a hundred dollars on an NFT and have no idea how to access it? Absolutely. <laughs> Although to be fair, I have no idea how I would access the NFT, but also I'm not in the market buying them. I was going to say, but you're also not an idiot who's going to go buy one. Let alone a hundred dollars uh, to some Photoshopped stolen artwork because guess what? It came out that uh, it's stolen copyrighted work that they've uh, photoshopped or yeah, just stolen from t shirt sites. And some of them actually still have the copyright uh, info water box on them because, yep. of course, because, of course, <laughs> I mean, it follows the, the logic that you see for um, all the sort of like Kenyan rich dad uncle scams of like you put all of the stupid shit front and center so that people who are too smart to fall for it 
you don't have to deal with them. You only have to deal with the people that are stupid or desperate enough, or maybe maybe not stupid, ignorant, naive. I don't know. I'm sure they are. I uh, know. Uh, I'm pretty sure stupid is apropos here. Yeah. But, you know, so they are the only ones that you hook. So apropos, though, good word. Uh, well, cr- speaking of NFTs, right? This is it's not directly an NFT thing, but it seems like the the closest thing to a segue I'll have to talk about playing with an AI art generator. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been an interesting experience. I uh, I downloaded one. I mean, there's ones that you can use online, but you know they have huge queue times and fee. Some of them have fees and stuff. And I found one that I could just download and play with. It's interesting. I mean, I've mostly been feeding it like nonsense words or trying to figure out how to get like a half decent mm-hmm. image <clears throat> by slightly changing the one thing I say over and over again until it gives me like kind of what I'm looking for. But uh, if you hit, um, you know, essentially like retry, like regenerate this image enough times, you always get tits. Always. Usually it's only like three or four like re-renders before it starts giving you tits. It's like, I don't know what to do. Here, have some boobs. Oh, it, it knows you. Yeah. I mean, like probably 75, 80% of the stuff it gives me is garbage, not like unusable. And then like another 15 to 20% of it is like, this is okay. It looks like a high schooler or a middle schooler with some like growing artistic talent made this um, better than what I could do, but not great. And then like that remaining, you know, five ish percent is like, OK, yeah. this is pretty good. It looks and, like and then Yeah, it, but, you know, it's like, oh, this is pretty good. It looks like somebody who knows what they're doing made this. So I can see the appeal of using them. I am not an artist. I'm not going to like make an argument for or against using AI art. I'm going to go with my artistic friends on this. There, and... there, there was a big to do uh, a week or two ago. A uh, tech writer made a children's book solely using AI generated art and pissed off a lot of artists. There was some sort of group that was calling for a boycott of it. Now, now I need to go find this. It reminds me of the um, who was it that made humans need out apply? Was that mm-hmm. ah, there's a YouTube video called Humans Need Not Apply um, that was made, I think, in 2015 that talked about this, about how that AI can replace most human ta- tasks and that people who think that their jobs are safe aren't. Eventually, yeah. the AI will come for their jobs, too. And like, it doesn't, you know, it's not I'm not going to be like, oh, you should go watch this like and, and deal with it. Like, I'm not going to do that. That's being an asshole. But, like, I just, you know, I'm thinking about that. Like, oh, yeah, yep. The the robots are, are going to come for everybody's, you know, come for everyone's jobs. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. Oh, here Craig. we go. Craig is a, a kind and generous master. All right, what is this? He made a children's book using AI artists, or using AI artists are not happy. I saw this pop up on Reddit, for, uh, well, a week ago. Yeah. And it's fascinating, <laughs> because, right? The fact yeah. that he was able to get that consistent of an art, too, right? It is fascinating. I mean, I've saved a few of the better images. Mm-hmm. Um, Where's my... Uh, I might have not uploaded. I saved it into Google Drive, so I could just go back and forth between my laptop and my desktop. Mm-hmm. But it, it looks like it didn't upload. Uh, I've got a couple saved locally. Hang on. Uh... Where did I save that shit? It's on my storage drive. Yeah, okay. Here's here's a few successful like images that I made with it that I thought were pretty neat and like worth keeping. Are uh, totally uh, tits, right? No, there is one weird one that I just had to save. I gave it the the prompt uh, anime uh, anime style battleships. And there's, like, just two random anime character heads amid a sea of, like, I don't know, spaceship smatterings. But, you know, the, the so I sent uh, I sent you four images and just for the... I mean, the dragon just, one's rather nice. The dragon one is really cool, yeah. Um, one of them uh, is, like, uh, a although, sci-fi... Although it's, like, dragons with dragons for legs. 
Yeah, it does that a lot. You'll you'll tell it, you know, like um, you know, some like okay, I was trying to get a Star Wars character thing and so I was like uh, you know, Jedi with red lightsaber. And it's like a red human with like <laughs> holding a, a lightsaber that's red that also has like lightsaber arms and I'm like what are you doing? Stop it. I mean, I definitely can see why some artists are pissed off because, you know, these AI artists are trained on artwork that's put out there. Yeah. So, I'm not here saying it's sour grapes or anything, saying that, well, well, they're just upset because it's taking their jobs. It's more, you know, taking their uh, livelihood, using that to learn how to draw and then, right? Yeah. They're not being paid or given any kind of anything. For this, you know, AI to come in and use all of their work to learn from and then make it so that for a lot of people who don't care, who just want something that's good enough to where that they're not going to seek out their services. Like, I'm a big fan of paying artists. I've paid quite a few of my artist friends to make stuff for me over the years. I've got this huge, and I mean, you've seen some yeah. of the things, but like, I've got a pretty big library of art that I've had made for me and I'm not going to stop paying my friends to make stuff for me because they can do a much better job because I can tell them what I want and get what I want. With the AI, you tell it something and it's like, well, that's, interesting while i while i appreciate tits but i didn't want tits on my you know battleship or whatever although i did feed it a bunch of phrases yeah i did feed it a bunch of phrases of like x you know like blank thing with boobs Uh, the question is what did it do whenever you use the term error morph uh i haven't tried yet i i was you know i'm getting there but i i I started with anthropomorphic stuff And it really didn't know what to do with that word. (laughs) So I'm guessing, like, I think it just, like, whenever you give it a word that it doesn't know or can't find, I don't know if it's, like, looking up some dictionary or can search online. uh, With the Webster's Dictionary, it's like, like, what the fuck is that? Like, what the fuck is this thing that he's asking me for? (laughs) Fucking weirdo, man. But yeah, if you ask it for something that it doesn't know, it really just like loses its shit and makes utter nonsense. But you know, it's it. For, I mean, for me, really, it's just been a toy to play with and see what it can do. Um, I queued up a ton of renders and had it rendering stuff at work. I did get a you know that classic image, um, their artwork of the dogs playing poker. Yeah. So I was like painting of. X playing poker, and I got a really good one with horses. <laughs> and I saved that one, but it, it must oh, they be... Had tits. They did not have tits, actually. I'm surprised you saved it, then. I did do one that was, like, boobs with tits, and it was just, <laughs> like, a stack of, of breasts that had breasts on them. It was very strange-looking. Honestly, I could see it being, like, an eldritch horror monster type thing. Like, oh, why did why does the why do the boobs have boobs? Boobs all the way down. Uh, I thought that was Congress. I oh. So uh speaking of Twitter burning to the ground. Did something happen while we were recording? Yes. Uh Elon Musk has said he's stepping down. Oh so, uh, shit. So uh head of lettuce wins again. Uh this broke uh two hours ago, so while we were recording. I mean, what in the world could have possibly Happen? Maybe I think his ego just has taken too much of the bashing. Maybe his accountants finally yelled at him enough about how many billions of dollars he's wasted that he's like, "Shit, I guess I gotta." Uh, uh, It is. uh, He says that he'll resign as head of Twitter, but he's still going to be part of it. But the thing is, also, he laid off a bunch of engineers days before Christmas because, right? Mind you, this is like the last quarter of the. or so of the employees that he has. Yeah. There so, was a, right. a rumor that feels pretty credible to me, honestly, that like the only, em- the bulk of the employees that were left were ones that were being held, you know, their work visas were being held over their heads. 
It wouldn't surprise me. Yep, because Elon Musk is a piece of shit. But yeah, this is crazy. You know, that poll, I expected that that poll was just bullshit. I, but... I was not. I, you, you, no, no. Here's what I was expecting. I was expecting everybody that voted yes was going to get banned. Oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, that, w- that would make sense, though. I would. Yeah, I wouldn't put that past him. But no, I expected the poll to just be bullshit. I expected him to say if the vote was like, no, don't leave. Be like, see, I knew y'all loved me. And if the vote was yes, leave, he'd have been like, ah, bullshit, bots, fake news, whatever. <laughs> but I bet what he's going to say now is like, well, you know democracy and whatnot i voted and people said i should left so i left that's how the now, fucking now, now it makes you wonder who is he gonna get right yeah but that means that all of the elon musk like simps will be like see he he was always on board with democracy and free speech and stuff and they'll just ignore like him banning all those journalists and <clears throat> shadow banning lots of leftist content like, yeah, I guess, I mean, you know, he's going to turn this into a, a situation that makes him look good to the people who still, you know, shovel his shit for him. All of the rest of us are not fooled, but he doesn't really care about us. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, he doesn't care about them either. He only cares about his ego. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll see just what happens now, because uh, Twitter has to be at a very, very, very bad state at this point yep i mean he <clears throat> twitter has always lost money twitter has never once made money mm-hmm. um, they might have made money for a single quarter but in terms of like an entire fiscal year twitter has always lost money and then they lost more money as an operating company like the the main you know the the owners of twitter made out like fucking bandits 40 something billion dollars like you know, hell yeah to them, I guess. But, you know, then Twitter started bleeding money faster than ever because he made a whole bunch of moves that had advertisers immediately pull advertising from Twitter, advertising dollars. Which I can't blame them. No, I can't either. Elon Musk and Trump, and there's a few others, are in this category of, like, rich idiots that real, quote-unquote, real rich people you know, make fun of and take advantage of every opportunity they can get. Like, I've seen it over and over I'm again saying, and have uh, read they're, stuff. They're both in categories of too rich to fail because they basically fail upwards every single time. Yeah. Because they have so much, I, I don't want to say uh, revenue, but resources. Yeah. And people to bail them out of their own mistakes. Yep. But, you know, I've seen in documentaries and read interviews and, <clears throat> you know, whatnot, where that, you know, oil, you know, billionaires and actual industrial titan billionaires and, you know, your your Bill Gates is of the world. And to a certain extent, you're Mark Zuckerberg's too. Mark Zuckerberg is also an idiot, but Mark Zuckerberg had some skills and some talents that he used. Like, mm-hmm. certainly, I don't buy his whole origin story shtick, but, you know, he had skills and talents, whereas Elon Musk had Mommy's yeah. Emerald Mine. Yeah, I was going to say, an Emerald Mine. <laughs> you know, those people make fun of Elon Musk. It's it's just, God. I mean, they're all fucking, like, eat the rich. Billionaires shouldn't be allowed to exist. Mm-hmm. But, you know... It's so interesting to watch them, how they kind of treat each other and talk about each other. And yeah, Elon Musk and Donald Trump are both stooges to them. And the fact that yeah, our democracy is basically collapsing in on itself because of Donald fucking Trump, right? Yep, although it wasn't Donald Trump alone. I know, I know. Uh, actually, I would say the the main issue of the late 20th century reaches back to Nixon and Newt Gingrich. Newt fucking Gingrich. Yeah. (laughs) Was he ever president? No, but damn, did he, uh, he wrote the book on how all of of the worst Republican presidents. Yeah. He made politics poison essentially. 
Yeah, I mean, he he literally wrote the book on how all Republican officials of the late 20th and the entirety of the 21st century have operated to win races and essentially destroy American democracy and cultural progress. You heard that there's a documentary out there really going into the details of Newt Gingrich's uh, political career and how he basically weaponized C-SPAN. I know the, you know, the overarching tones of it, but I've never actually seen the speeches that he used to give. I've never seen them. Again, one of the podcasts I've I've listened to, um, you're wrong about. It's earlier, better, uh, I guess you could say seasons of content before they mm-hmm. changed hosts and kind of what the show was about. Which, you know, fine. The show's still fine, but it's not my... Yeah, but they're wrong about it now. <laughs> yeah, but they're wrong about it. But the earlier seasons of You're Wrong About deals with a lot of political stuff and Newt Gingrich comes up over and over and over again as like all of these things that happened in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s where it's like and then Newt Gingrich shows up again and I'm like <laughs> god fucking damn it you know here he is with his wedge issues and driving single issue voters and you know destructive rhetoric and how he convinces people convinces people to vote against themselves their own best interests and Pretty much at my state in general. Because, I mean, my state too. Because, well, in my state, it's, you know, uh, the liberals want to try to clean up the environment and retrain uh, the coal miners into clean energy or other industries. And the right uh, talks about how, well, that's your heritage. You don't want them to, uh, the left libtards to remove your heritage, do you? Hell no! I don't care if you're giving the one percent uh, another tax cut. I just want to uh, have coal mining and uh, black lung. The um, better yet, my, let's let's deregulate the mines. Get more coal miners killed. My favorite political YouTuber, whom I have shared with you, uh, Bo of the Fifth Column. Yeah, uh, he's he's my he says I think what is my one of my favorite catchphrases regarding politics. Which is tradi- doing things by tradition is just giving in to peer pressure from dead people. Very true. I love that. I've thrown that phrase up a number of times against people. It's like, why do we do that? Well, that's because that's how we've always done it. So you're saying tradition. Yeah. You know, tradition is just peer pressure from dead people, right? That's shut up several people <laughs> who have been arguing with me about something. Yeah. What really worries me going forward is uh well my niece is possibly on the lgbtq spectrum and she really dislikes politics but i have a feeling that if she doesn't get into it she's going to get regulated that's right yeah see what happens in texas as that moves forward after they yeah, pulled the registry yeah. of all the yeah i was about to say weren't they talking about a registry i saw something about that by day dive too much into it yeah i mean they're you know they're saying at least the last i saw mm-hmm. the the paul the officials in texas were like oh no we're just checking some data we're not gonna do anything with it but they pulled all the information of all of the i can't remember if it was trans people or if it was something else and it was basically gonna include all trans people and then a number of other lgbt people or the LGB, I guess, people. But, yep, they, they've they put together a, a directory of, I think it's 16,000 or 17,000 people. I mean, just, what the fuck, right? right? And here's the other thing, is that they're against gun registries, because, yep, right? Yep. <sighs> the fuck, I, right? I, I thoroughly dislike the political spectrum in the United States, because it's Far right to center right. We don't really have a representative left in the United States. But I mean, we have some uh, individuals, but you know, they're basically holding up a thread, right? Yeah. Because they get targeted by both sides. Mm-hmm. Or, well, the both angles of the right. That, that upsets people a lot when I talk about that, too. Lure, we don't want to... Don't bring world politics into this. We don't want to measure by anybody else. We're America. Meanwhile, Everybody measures their right. stuff by us. It's like, no, they don't. Not really, except maybe militarily speaking. Yeah, which 
I have my own issues with the U.S. military. Me too. Mostly it's too fucking big. Yep. Also, I, I have the same issue with the military as I do with the re- uh, religion. They go after kids far too often. Yep. And it's often it's the only choice for in both uh, things. Uh, either the social side for churches or, you know, having a, any shot at higher education because, you know, otherwise, right? Yeah. What's well, the thing of, like, adults know better? So you gotta go after the kids. Mm-hmm. Probably was really quiet on that when I was shifting <laughs> around. All right. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. What episode number is this? Two ninety one. I think so. All right, Craig. Time for you to go to bed too, bud.